All right, guys, this is TechNetWet. I am back here with my 40A port PoE 500 watt Ubiquity Unify switch. Um, uh, yeah, there, hey. This thing is freaking awesome. I love this thing. Um, it is used. I didn't spring for the $1,000 or $899 or $900. I just couldn't, I, I couldn't stretch the budget far enough. So I did get a renewed one. Hopefully she does me well and lasts a long time. So we are gonna get into this guy. I'm gonna plug it in and you're gonna see the lights come on and then I'm gonna go over an overview of everything that's on the switch. And then uh, the next video will be me setting all this wonderful, cool hardware up. So I wanna show you the blinky blinkies. A couple cool things is this lights up. This is a, a light that tells you if it's firmware is updating, if it's having issues, if it's been um, provisioned. Blue means it's set up and it's provisioned. White means it's it's ready, it's defaulted and it's ready. Um, blinking white usually means there's a firmware upgrade and all that wonderful jazz. So let's go ahead and plug this in. You guys are gonna hear it. There are active fans on this guy. It is not like a lot of the other switches. So it is kind of loud. I don't know if you guys can pick that up. So it does take a couple minutes to boot up here. And as you can see, it's a light blue right now. That's uh, common. Right side, right side guy is link. Left side guy is PoE. So the color code goes as follows. You're gonna have a PoE plus for orange on the on the left side. 24 volt green is on the right on the left side. And then on the right side, down is no light at all. Then 10 100 is gonna be orange, and then 10 1000 is gonna be green. So all these lights up this is this sfp1 and sfp2 are not shared so there are not two sfp pluses on here it is only one set of sfp pluses and then one set of regular sfps now, the one thing about the SFPs though, is it is 1.25 gigabytes per second bi-directional, meaning you get 1.25 up and 1.25 down, which is really neat. So it is still faster than a one gig connection. So you come around here, see it's white, means it's just defaulted. There is a reset button right over here. You will need one of those little uh, keys that look like this. One of these little guys, if you wanna reset it, I would say, if you uh, order a couple from Amazon, they're cheap and just keep them around your server stuff. And then you can come in here and stick it in there and reset your stuff. So how that reset works, if you press and hold for between one and under five seconds, it will just reset the switch. But anything between five and 10 seconds is gonna default the switch back to uh, stock configuration. So I'm gonna give you guys a roundabout look at the switch. The wings are built in. You don't have to put these guys on there. It is meant to be rack mounted. So on this side, if you come around, it has two fans and a blank spot for, I'm guessing, another fan. I'm guessing the 750 watt version has more fans because PoE switches do require cooling because it is a giant power supply. So if you come around here, you got two more fans and then a blank spot for some more fans. Come around to the back, we got a console port and we got the power port. And that's pretty much this guy in a nutshell. Um, Couple of nice things about the switch is if you've filled up a 24 port and you're gonna be adding like eight cameras and three APs, well, you're already at 11 ports there. So I got a 24 port that's filled downstairs and I'm adding PoE stuff to my network. So what do I do? I have an eight port or a 10 port Cisco switch that eight of the ports are PoE, okay. But that's still, I still am missing three ports of when I do all my math and stuff like that. So when it comes down to it, the best bet for efficiency and power use is to combine all that stuff into one sphere of influence. It'll also help with the power bill because I'm not running two switches. I'm not running a PoE and then running a non-PoE. You might find yourself that you buy these switches and you're like, crap, I didn't buy the PoE because you didn't want to spend the extra three, $400. And then down the road, you might buy the PoE could go ahead and sell the, the non-POE. They, they, these switches hold their values for the most part. They, um, they are not gonna lose their value. Cisco, Unify, Ubiquity, um, edge router stuff. Edge router stuff's kinda on the lower end, but it, it still does hold its value. But uh, what I would say is, 
If you need PoE, get it in the switch. It does cost more. You might have to wait a little bit longer, but that is the general gist of it. So I'm not gonna go over the DAC cables. I've done that in other videos, guys. If you wanna watch some of my other unified videos, go ahead and check those out. If you look at the 10 gig switch video or the Intel NIC video, uh, X520 video, I have that explained in there. It'll go over what these ports are for and what you utilize them for. If you hook two switches together, you're really gonna want these, any, any of these in 10 gig for trunking and, and stuff like that. So um, the one thing that I don't like about this 48 port is that there's not dual or four SFP pluses. Because uh, what happens if you start running redundant links to switch for fallover, for failover, because DAC cables can go bad. They're just like Ethernet cables, which I've seen Ethernet cables go bad before. So you have two of them and it's going to switch. That's as far as you can go. Unless you do a daisy chain and then come back around from the top switch back to that port. There are ways around it, but <clears throat> really I think a switch of this caliber should have four of them. But it's price point and it's ease of use and simplicity of setting up are way outweigh the benefits of it only having two of those ports. All right, guys, this is TechNetWay. This is an overview of the US 48 500 watt PoE uh, Ubiquiti Unified Switch. Thank you guys, and this is TechNetWay, and I'm out, y'all. Hey guys, it's TechNetWood here. Make sure you guys subscribe and like and hit that bell. Thanks.